One of the questions that I get pretty often is, you know, how do I come up with my own unique color palettes? And in this video, I want to show you guys a Photoshop trick, which will give you an unlimited amount of really neat, limited palettes that you can use to make your pages look more interesting. So check it out. Hey there, my name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist and the instructor at 01 Art School. Dot com and today I'm going to show you guys this really awesome trick that I found in Photoshop for creating limited palettes that are pretty awesome. So before we get into that though, you guys need to understand like what a limited palette is and kind of what we're talking about. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that and also how gradient maps work. If you understand those two things, you'll you'll understand how this trick works. So first, I want to give you guys a couple of examples of what I think are, are cool color palettes. Uh, not cool like the temperature but actually neato okay so this is Dave Stewart who is probably one of the greatest if not the greatest colorist ever and I don't know what project this is from but this is an example of a, of a limited color palette and so what I mean here is if I start you know color picking and I'm just gonna copy all these colors up here you'll notice that they all sort of fall into this very uh, pleasing kind of Martha Stewarty color palette going on here. I used to work at Kmart in high school and we had Martha Stewart paint and that's what this page reminded me of. This looks like those swatches. Anyway, but you'll notice that you know all of these colors they they fit very well together and if you'll notice on the on the color picker over here they, they all sort of live within the same if you'll look at this little thing jumping around here you'll notice that most of it is, except for that blue maybe, it's all kind of in the warm side of the color wheel. You know, So he's limited himself to mostly warm colors, and then when he wants something to recede in your focus, then he uses this kind of bluish dark color. So you're kind of looking past the old man in this first panel to the other guy. But uh, that's that's a limited color palette. And and they originally started, of course, with, with you know traditional painters, and you know, they may only have a few colors to choose from, or uh, they would intentionally choose a limited number of, you know, paints uh, to create uh, their paintings. And I, there's another example here. This is Matt Wilson in Paper Girls. And again, I'm just going to pull all these over here so you guys can kind of see them together. And, you know, all of these colors all kind of fall into the same, you know, kind of uh, mood. There's this mostly bluish purples and a couple of warm pinks and you know as you go down the the color picker here you can again see that they all kind of live in this range right here you know varying saturations and brightness and whatnot but they all kind of live there that's another good example of a limited palette this is Dave again again you have you know the yellows and oranges contrasting with the greens and the grays and whatnot but that's another example of again limited palette and there's one from Postal that I did and another one from Postal that I did kind of a complimentary thing going on here there's really only a handful of colors being used here reds and yellows and then the greens all right and another example there okay you guys get what a limited palette is so now I want to explain gradient maps so in Photoshop I've created this very simple gradient here of just black to going all the way over here white so I'm going to go down here to the bottom right in this little semicircle half moon looking symbol down here. Those are the adjustment layers. Okay. So when you click that, I don't know if this yet shows up. Okay. So I'm going to click on gradient map. Okay. Now what a gradient map does, let me pick some colors so that you guys will understand this a little better. So what a gradient map does is it maps the, in this case, let's pull this over here this red to all of the darkest colors in the image and it maps this green color to all of the the light colors in the image so white on this particular image is pure green okay if i flip back and forth you can see and the black is pure red and then you've got all of the kind of gradient in between and you can have lots of colors in a gradient map you know some of these are all i think default that come with photoshop the orange and purple and the green and uh, red and here's one this one's got three colors you've got the blue on the on the black side you've got this red over here in the middle which is what we're seeing here and then you've got the bright yellow which is the white 
and then you can see in between you know you've got all of these mixes you know so you've got some purples in here from the red and blue mixing you've got oranges from the yellow and red mixing so it's an interesting way to get different effects and and uh, photo editors use these a lot in different ways and uh, and I've used them before I'll show you guys a quick example here so uh, this is a page from uh, uh, hack slash resurrection that I'm working on so if I go down here and create a gradient map and let's just pick one of these and click OK then you can see it's doing the same thing all the blacks are purple all the whites are, are orange and you can set the mode of the gradient map to color and now it is uh, not affecting the values okay so the colors are still affecting the image but it's only affecting the color and it's not affecting the value that's what color mode does okay and you can play around with the opacity of this and and kind of get some interesting looks out of it you know so that's what it looks like at zero opacity that's it at 100 where everything is either orange or purple and then you can split the difference and get some interesting Instagram looking effects here so what this trick is I'm going to delete this so I'm going to go into I'm getting on top of uh, all of the layers here and I'm going to create a new gradient map now uh, again by default this is this is how it comes so I'm going to reverse this so that the the dark parts are, are on the left side and the light parts are on the right side and I'm going to click right on this bar where this gradient is I'm going to click right there all right so this is what we're going to change zero says gradient type we're going to change this from solid to noise and it's going to pick a bunch of random colors and put them on the gradient map tons and tons of different colors and obviously this doesn't look great in its current state but what you can do is you can adjust the roughness and if we pull this to the right it introduces more colors which is not what we want I want to limit this to just a handful of colors so the further you get toward zero the fewer options you're going to have here so at zero we've pretty much got two colors green and blue but I'm going to raise this up to like say 30 40 and you can see that it's starting to introduce some different stuff in here okay let's just call it 34 and click OK now this looks funny so we're going to change the mode to color and you can see immediately it uh, changes the the tone of this and if, I, and if I adjust the opacity let's say I put it at 50 percent then I've got a mix of my underlying colors which are here and then if I turn that back on you can see it with the gradient map attached now if I go back to the gradient map I promised you guys one click or one button so right down here where it says randomize now I have restrict colors checked because I want to restrict it to printable colors I think that's what that is and when you click randomize watch what happens it's gonna just randomly put a different set of colors in here and every time you click it you get a different palette so yeah I'm just clicking this button and I'm getting all these different options for palettes here now if I want more variance in the color like this is all kind of yellows and reds I can just introduce more roughness okay and it's gonna start dipping in some some in this case some pinks and purples and hit randomize again and it's the colors are a little bit more varied this time now not every one that you choose is going to be a you know a knock it out of the park palette but I have stumbled across some things that I would not have considered you know playing around with this and I actually saw this on a uh, Photoshop to, uh, editing like a it was a Photoshop tutorial channel called Pix and Perfect, and it's a great channel uh, that focuses primarily on Photoshop tricks and secrets and things for editing photos. And what I found is I like this a lot. And if you found one, if you find one that you like, like I just did, just click New and it'll save it as you know one of the uh, presets here. Uh, what I found is by you know looking up in other channels and other resources that are outside of comics is I'm actually learning that there's not a there's not a lot of skill overlap there you know it's like what digital artists are teaching you that they're doing with Photoshop is very very different from what say a photo editor is using Photoshop for you know Photoshop does a jillion different things and there's a million ways to do everything and so 
you know, don't be afraid to jump outside of, you know, comics related uh, channels to, to learn new tricks. But uh, he had posted this as a way to get uh, unlimited filters, you know, which is something that a photographer would, would appreciate. But, you know, for us, we don't really need, I guess you could call it these filters, but what these really are is their limited color palettes is, is exactly what they are. So, like I said, make sure the gradient type is set to noise. You know, I would set it to 30 or less, 35 or less, somewhere in there, to get a, a decent uh, mix of colors that's not too crazy. Like I said, if you start getting above 40 or 50, it gets to be too much because there's just too many colors being introduced. But I've, I found the sweet spot to me to be in the in the, like the high 30s. But yeah, and then even once you find something that you like, but it's like, man, I wish this had a little less red in it, or I wish this was lighter or darker. You can still go in and adjust, you know, the underlying colors here on this RGB slider. So if I want less red, then I just, you know, take the red out of it. You know, if I want less green, pull the pull the green out of it. You know, so even what once you've clicked the click the randomize button, you've still got options here to make other changes. So actually, while I was editing this, I realized that there was a couple of things I should point out here. You can totally use this as just a starting point. You know, I'm using this at the end of a finished page just to kind of show you guys how it works. But you could do this early on and then do your rendering on top of it. You know, instead of, you, know, you could put the gradient map under your lines and, you know, limit it to just uh, the things that are under the lines. You could have your special effects on top of it. Gradient maps only affect what's underneath. So you could start with this and then tweak it and make adjustments, of course. So yeah, it's a gradient map. It's in color mode at about 50%. Obviously, you don't want it to always affect the entire image every time. Uh, so what I would probably do with this in a, in a real world scenario is I would use this for certain planes of the image. You know, maybe it's in the foreground or maybe it's in the background because these always come with, you know, a, a mask attached to that gradient map. So let's say, for example, that I didn't want the the backgrounds, for example, to be affected by this, then I could just fill that mask with black and I've got my underlying color there. So I can still open up that gradient map and make all my changes, but you'll notice that the background itself is not being affected. So you can completely, you know, use this in any way that, that you feel makes sense for you, but I'm pretty excited about this little trick. Uh, I think it's going to introduce some palettes and options that I would never have, have thought of otherwise. So, but anyway, uh, if this was a little over your head or you guys want more information on coloring and more of the fundamentals, be sure to check the description for links to my coloring courses. And as always, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, all the things we ask you to do. It is appreciated. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.